Well, hi there guys, um, just um, making this video, feel the Holy Spirit wants me to again uh, come to this subject and uh, I've spoken about it quite a lot and I've just came from a land which, uh, in Africa, you know, which um, just about everybody believes in spiritual gifts in one way or the other. And when I say that one way or the, way or the other, either, either they're a Christian and they believe in these spiritual gifts or they're not a Christian. And they know that there, there, there are spirits and the, the, the Book of Enoch, which I got right here. Um, again, I just spoke about it the other day. Again, this is the Oxford Press, which I spoke about. And I'm um, just going to read from it. And you can see the chapter 69 here. It's definitely worth reading. As I said, I do believe this is the Word of God. Some people don't. Why Catholics have it in their canon and so-called Protestants don't. I don't know what the reason for that was. But I know that, um, well, let's just go through it a little bit. And this is going to be regarding the gift of tongues, but other spiritual gifts. Um, you can see here, ordinances of the sun, moon, very, very interesting for anybody that's observing God's creation and trying to understand it. The reason as to why God created things is in the Word of God, of course, the Tanakh, the Torah, um, which, of course, I'm more than um, happy for Christians to study, but uh, because maybe... Um, I'm trying to speak about spiritual gifts. They can't connect the two because they've been taught by the false pastors and the false prophets that you can't be born again with the Holy Spirit and also observe the Torah. But I'm just going to show you that this uh, should, and indeed it should be in at least the canon of prophets in the Old Testament. And it does talk about laws of creation as well. So it's, um, it's a massive book that if you're a Christian, prayerfully read this. So you can see here it's talking about he sat on the throne of his glory, son of judgment. This is, you know, <clears throat> as I scroll down. And also the certain heavenly bodies that didn't um, perform their actions were punished, chained, etc., etc. And they're talking about angels and they're talking about stars, which are normally angels. But I'm not going to go into that today. We'll briefly read chapter 70 and then we'll go ahead and this is the last chapter in section 2 um, and it came to pass after that his name during his lifetime was raised aloft to that of the son of man and to the lord of spirits from amongst those who dwell on the earth again this is a prophecy I mean Jesus Christ was referred to as the, the son of man on more occasion he referred to himself as the son of man because of course he was the son of Mary which the three Abrahamic religions testify to except of course Judaism denies it but the other two accept it and he was uh, raised aloft on the chariots of the spirit and his name vanished among them and from that day I was no longer numbered among them and he sat he set me between two winds between the north and the west where the angels took the cords to measure for me the place of the elect and righteous and there I saw the first fathers and the righteous whom from the beginning dwell in that place okay that's possibly referred to as Abraham's bosom okay next chapter so so I've dealt with that one very briskly and it came to pass after this that my spirit was translated and it ascended into the heavens and I saw the, the holy sons of God they were stepping on flames of fire their garments were white and their raiment I don't know what the difference between garments and raiment was maybe their garments and their appearance perhaps spiritual clothing perhaps and their faces shone like snow or even in some cases like the sun Okay, so you have this appearance like Moses was. Again, Moses was the one who brought the law to the to the world, as it were, through the you know the the Kohanim to the Jewish people and the rest of Israel and the world. And yet, his face shone like the sun as well. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the same Holy Spirit as we get today is born again Christians, 
again, that's horrifying. You know, th this teaching would be horrifying to the church today. But that's maybe why certain occultists just don't want you to have the Book of Enoch, because uh, as Christians, we'd actually start to think as Christians, instead of thinking as uh, an individual little uh, category or group or denomination. <coughs> And the next verse says, And I saw two streams of fire, and the light of that fire shone like he caneth. I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm sure we can do a check on that. And I fell on my face before the Lord of Spirits. So again, it's uh, Yahweh or Yeshua. He is the God in the flesh is the Son of God, the Son of Man. He's referred to in the Book of Enoch as all those things. But also the Lord of Spirits and the fact that he's in control of any any spiritual aspects, authorities, demons. They all have to bow before him. And this is talking about, of course, Jesus Christ, the Yeshua, Hamashiach. Again, you know, this, this will shock Christians that haven't read the Book of Enoch. Um, we'll say, why haven't our pastors told us about this? Well, you know, They've always been there. You know, I thank the Catholic Church for keeping my scriptures intact. I'm sure God's happy about it, you know, because he prophesied that um, he, he would do it. So again, he can use any anything, anyone he wants. You know, there's a lot of nefarious things go on in that church. They did keep the canon of scripture together for the saints to study. <clears throat> then it says, And the angel Michael one of the archangels. Now back in chapter 20 we see the seven archangels which are referred to as well in the book of Revelation, the seven archangels. Seized me by my right hand and lifted me up and led me forth into all the secrets and he showed me all the secrets of the righteous. Hallelujah. So he's talking about possibly dominions, spiritual dimensions which exist in which God keeps the righteous, keeps the saints, and um, <clears throat> you know rewards them for the words they speak, the prayers they say, and in most cases the actions that they actually do. And he showed me all the secrets of the end, ends of the heaven, and all the chambers of the stars and all the luminaries, whence they proceeded before the face of the holy ones. So again, this is telling you that yeah, the physical stars that we see, the the powers of the heavens, you know, the sun, moon, and stars that we read about in Genesis 1, 14 to 16, and uh, right through the Psalms, you know, King David sings about the fact that, um, you know, the chamber of the sun and the moon and so on, like the bride and the bridegroom, and <clears throat> I think it's Psalm 119, if I'm remembering correctly, and all the luminaries talking about the fact that um, there are holy angels or archangels that control these unseen aspects. You know, our scientific people, community might call it gravity or might call it um, some other force like dark energy or something like that. You know, the mysterious force which they can't explain. The Bible is telling you that God's angels are the ones who control and regulate the movements of the heavenly bodies. And it... Uh, the Book of Enoch especially talks about their movements, you know, which actually does back up the fact that the, I believe that the Earth is spherical like the rest of the planets and stars in the universe, and um, and that the, everything is moving, you know. That uh, you know. Anyway, let's not get too deeply into that. And he translated my spirit into the heaven of heavens. So you get um, Paul talking about that there's three different heavens. In some books it talks about seven different heavens. So this is him being translated to the top heaven where you can't get any further up. This is the very, where, where the throne of God is, where, you know, the Son of God, the secrets and the, the powers of heaven rule the creation, the universe, the seen and the unseen. And I saw, as it were, a structure built of crystals. Now this is not... Superman, or this is not like you know, whatever. But you know, the, the, there's there's some uh, crystal structure meant to be seen on the moon, as well that previously was destroyed, possibly built by the fallen angels. 
um, crystals are normally used, regulated for to harness and use types of energies which we see in Superman as well. And of course, um, well, let's keep reading. And between those crystals, tongues of living fire. Now hold on a second, Pastor John. Um, nobody's told us before that the tongues of fire was spoken about before, you know, the book of Acts. We just thought it was the book of Acts that the tongues of fire was spoken about. Oh no. Here we see, this is um, the book of Enoch, who was the seventh um, from Adam, as it were, Patrick, and uh, he was the one that was translated into heaven, and he was shown all these things before he was he was taken to heaven. His spirit, his soul, as it were, was translated there. He was shown all these things by the angels. And uh, he was shown that there was actually a tongues of living fire, and that's from Book of Enoch, 71, uh, chapter 71, verse 5, right there. Where do we go from that? And my spirit saw the girdle which girt the house of fire, and on its four sides were streams full of living fire, and they girt that house. So this was a house built with great columns of living fire which has um, never seen before living fire I mean you know what fire looks like on earth you know it consumes things um, wood you know, it can consume a whole number of things and it can devour things but this is actual living what looks like living fire which looks something else you know what I'm saying it's not quite fire that we see on earth but it's a different type of fire and these tongues of living fire aren't exactly again what you would refer to as like the fires of hell or the fires of is a different type of fire this is a holy fire this is a living fire this is a fire that can take shape even into a tongue and why would God want to do that exactly well remember the, the book of Isaiah said that he was translated into heaven and um, he was immediately aware that um, um, he was an unclean person even the words he spoke were unclean that he couldn't even utter a word because he couldn't find anything to say because he hadn't been consecrated and then the angel came and touched his lips with the coal of I think the living fire and all of a sudden he was able to speak well it's like that that um, when you have an experience with the Most High God and yes it does talk about tongues of angels as we uh see in the New Testament this is 1st Corinthians 13 it does talk about the spiritual gifts um, here we see the King James version here don't know which one it is but but I speak with tongues of men and of angels so again there's languages of men here on earth that um, that you can speak and someone else can interpret your language through a gift of a miraculous gift of interpretation that would be called or there's actual tongues of angels um, whereby, you know, do you think the heavenly hosts speak the Queen's English or the King's English? Or they speak Spanish? No, they don't speak any earthly language. Remember that the languages were confused at the Tower of Babel, you know, going back thousands of years because of the sins of men. And so the, the way of communicating that we have on earth, there's no actual pure dialect, complete dialect that is pleasing to God. You know, Hebrew has a form of it, and there's, there's other Middle Eastern languages that have a form that's a little step closer to what the original languages were Amaric, uh, Am uh, <laughs> Amaric and um, Aramaic, and, he and the ancient Hebrew. A little bit of Greek sometimes has these um, things, even English a little bit ha has, has a sort of a, a consistency about it. But. Um, you know which the King James Bible has um, but yeah the New Testament does speak about the tongues of men there's gifts of interpretation there is tongues of fire as well in the New Testament which we'll we'll put in here if we can if we can it's a little bit slow my computer let's put tongues of fire 
and there's a few scriptures about that as well book of Acts okay so I like flames of fire Acts 2 3 right there so this verse as you know all, all the, the verses from the New Testament has a root in the Old Testament as it were to give them credence to actually further explain you know the root meaning of them and such so where do these tongues of fires come from they appeared to them cloven tongues as of fire and sat upon each of them where did these come from they came from the heaven of heavens right where God is and where the very structure of the actual um, dominion as it were even the building as it were like if, if you can imagine it is like a type of palace that you know that the Lord stays in that it just could be completely vast and be but it's built with living fire columns of fire between those crystals tongues of fire <sighs> house of fire on the four sides or streams full of living fire and we know in the book of Revelation the Apostle John talks about um, living waters as well being there and also describes seraphim cherubim ophanim and there um, and it says they are those who sleep not and guard the throne of his glory these these are the the, the living creatures in appearance you know and uh, the seraphim the cherubim and the ophanim uh, a lot of people haven't really studied this class of angels either but basically we know that the cherubim there's four of them this face of a man face of an eagle face of an ox face of a lion uh, the seraphim have about I think six wings but um, they have an incredible appearance you know of, of, of like living fire as well and some of them talk that there's wheels or the aphanum is the actual wheels under these creatures which they're linked to actually serpent serpent like creatures so again you know was was one of the the serpents which spoke to Adam and Eve was was he one of those creatures who had fallen you know this is the whole debate and controversy who is Satan was he created or was he a fallen creature the Bible does definitely talk about him being a fallen angel I think the Quran talks about him being created but really you know if you read Ezekiel it says you know he speaks to that principality and talks talks about him that he was perfect from the beginning until he actually fell now that's a whole other subject we are talking about the tongues of fire and um, there are indeed heavenly angels or tongues of angels as it were these creatures don't speak like men these are different creatures they're not human beings guys you know these 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 seraphim cherubim phanim and um, even the the archangels even though they can appear like human beings really they, they, they are a different class of, of being you know the, the 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 angels are were created before man and they, 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 they have a more intimate relationship with God than man does because of man's fall you know we have to be born again that's why the Son of God had to come down and uh, shed his blood on the cross for us guys you know and then when when we just realize that this being you know the, the Son of God who is in control of all these creatures and that no being in the universe can touch him but he, do, he, he, he laid down his life for us so that we can be redeemed and reconciled to him and live with him for eternity and as it were discover the meaning of life which is really to worship and serve God that's, that's just what it is guys I mean if you're a Christian and you're living for this world then God kind of likens you to a harlot you know you've harloted yourself um, you've rejected your true love and you've went with someone else for money or for protection or for power whatever the reason is um, oftentimes I've experienced 
God um, binding me to to someone, you know, having a relationship with someone, and then them just turning and uh, maybe someone said something up, uh, to them about me, some lie, some something that's just set them off, and uh, well, you know, this is this is our first love. This is who we got to get back to, no matter what mistakes you've done in life. A few people these days, you know, the relationships are not stable in the homes where you know the, the marriage has been attacked in so many different ways but let's get back and let's get um, a relationship with God again and um, here in verse 5 it talks about the tongues of fire streams of living fire it talks about the angelic order I saw the angels who could not be counted thousands and thousands ten thousand times ten thousand and this is actually quoted in one of David's Psalms remember thousands times thousands, ten thousands times ten thousands, so this is a certain an angelic order. <sighs> just incredible, and, and they're all praising God and singing as well. I mean, it's just the most incredible. If, no one can really imagine how incredible it is to be in the presence of God and all of these creatures and saints and angels at once, but Enoch experienced it, um, John experienced it, the Apostle John, some born again Christians have been fortunate enough to be touched and an occasion to be to be shown those things in the spirit. And I think that when we dedicate ourselves to prayer, when we just want to study the word of God like what that we're doing right now, you know, studying the word of God. And they came forth from that house, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Phanuel, again that's four of the archangels. We don't know if these four are the four angels around the Ark of the Covenant? Remember, you know, Ron Wyatt spoke about that he met four archangels. They could they could be the four. I don't know. And with them, the head of days, his head white and pure as wool. The ancient of days, or the head of days, which is spoken of in the book of Daniel, and his raiment is indiscernible. So is this in a, a different appearance of Yeshua in heaven, or is this the Father? This is talking about again. This is a things that Christians talk about and they can dispute and they can they can say well this I believe yes it's Yehovah or whether it's the father or the son then that's the <laughs> interesting I fell on my face and my whole body became relaxed and my spirit was transfigured and I cried with a loud voice with my spirit of power and blessing glorified and exalted so again the Holy Spirit enters into Enoch and he's, he's able to speak he's able to exalt his God through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know. Otherwise, you're you're just like a dead man. When when you come into this situation, if you, everyone's ever experienced meeting or whatever the Lord's came to them in some way, you're just like a dead man. You you, you can't move unless God gives you the power, you know. And these blessings which went forth out of my mouth were well pleasing before that head of days. Remember, he's called the Ancient of Days in the Book of Daniel. The head of these came with Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Phanuel. And each of these archangels, remember, chapter 20, they have an office. And I think um, Raphael is the one that's got the office of healing. Gabriel is like the messenger of heaven. Michael is like a warrior angel. Phanuel, I think he's related to the, re you know, the um, regulations of the heavens. You know, the sun, moon, and stars. I think that's the angel that controls these heavenly bodies and you know that there's thousands and ten thousands of angels under some of these archangels it says a lost passage where the son of man was described as accompanying the head of days and Enoch asked one of the angels concerning the son of man and who he was hallelujah hallelujah we know who he is now he is Jesus Christ, he is Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of the Living God. And, uh, you know, to be saved we must confess this with our mouths, and um, then we shall be saved, call out the name of the Lord, and um, yes, we shall be saved, but we should have an understanding of who he is. And again, this uh, chapter here in the book of Enoch is describing who this Jesus Christ is and I don't care if who you are Catholic Protestant or Muslim or whatever if you reject this as the Word of God 
then you're not getting convicted of the fact that you you are a sinner and you do need to you you do need to be um, forgiven, washed in the blood of the Lamb. But most of all, you need to confess you're a sinner and just accept what Jesus did on the cross, and you will come to know. The Father will be revealed to you, and all those things, and understanding will come to you, and uh, you will be saved when you receive the Holy Spirit. And yes, you will be able to speak in new tongues, as Jesus said. Well, let's just check that one as well. I just I just want it to come up because, you know, you can see it in all the translations. Um, whichever one people like to use. Well, as we can see it here, the King James Bible, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. So, again, this is the tongues of fire, the new tongues. Um, we haven't quite looked at the gift of tongues because it has two different meanings, which I described them already. It has an earthly interpretation that you can hear the person speak in their own language or it has a heavenly interpretation where someone is speaking a tongue of men or a tongue of angels specifically and not a tongue of men where they can also interpret what's being said there hallelujah and of course if we get a message from God from one of the angels yes we'll be able to hear that angel speaking in our own language because you know that's sort of a built in uh it's built in, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to the, to the, uh, you know, God speaking to his people. He gives his understanding, you know. The Apostle Paul talks about, I pray with my understanding and I, I pray with the tongues of angels and, I, and so on. And he talks about the gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy, I think especially in the book of Corinthians. So this is made crystal clear, guys. Um, what I definitely see about this is that the modern day church try to demonize spiritual gifts. I think many of them in the UK try to demonize the gift of tongues. And what I would say to that is um, that definitely if you've been spending time in prayer with the Lord, perhaps fasting, reading your Bible, and you get this gift, you're not going to um, get this gift um of course without um, seeking the Lord first and it's uh, even though people might demonize you understand that this is not a demon or this is not a demonic tongue that you're receiving this is from the Lord um, occultists can speak in different uh, languages and uh, once they do certain sins and they have, they have to go for days and weeks and do terrible sins and um, you know kill lie, lie steal and destroy and you know they they get demons come to them and uh, these are demons that can also speak in tongues and do some form of miracles false signs and wonders as it were but uh one of my favorite chapters definitely when you're a street preacher you read uh, mark 16 17 is quoted many times and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils and speak with new tongues hallelujah Yes, even from it's even the Derry Rams versions listed there. Hallelujah. That's why even Catholics can get born again and get this spiritual gift. As I said, we might do some more apologetics in the future, maybe about the Catholic Church a little bit to encourage Catholics. You know, yes, you have the basis of Christianity. You believe that Jesus or Yeshua is the Son of God. Um. Yes, there's what we might know as a trinity as well. You might you might have an understanding about that. Um, but basically separating these two things out of all the other doctrine in the Catholic Church, these two things are what makes them basically a, a were a Christian church, at least at one time. And uh, yeah, so we can maybe do some more about that in the future. But again, I just want to thank you. For listening to this video, had a little bit of trouble with the last part.
of this video, but uh, I believe it's an important message the Lord wants to get out. So God bless you and seek spiritual gifts, as Paul said. I'll say the same thing as he's saying. Um, covet the spiritual gifts. Go and spend time with the Lord. Pray. You know, the John, the Apostle John, spent a lot of time praying to the Lord. I'm sure studying the scriptures, fasting. And there's just so many supernatural powers and gifts that come with the Holy Spirit in seeking the Lord. And uh, as a spiritual warfare, we are fighting. And so it's very important that we do all those things so that we can get the, all the victories that we need to get in our lifetime against the kingdom of Satan, which does fight against the saints. Hallelujah. But the victory is in our Lord Jesus Christ. And as the Bible says, that they shall overcome him with <clears throat> the blood of the Lamb and with the testimony of their mouths. So may you be blessed. May the Holy Spirit come and gift you with these new tongues, tongues of fire, even words and tongues of angels, hallelujah, that we can truly have that intimacy uh, with, with the Lord. I'm not going to try to... Uh, I'm not going to try to think that I can help people to speak in these new languages because I don't believe I can. Um, I believe it's you spending time with God and the Holy Spirit will lead you in those things as you have with me. All right then. Shalom in the name of Yeshua.